Hello and welcome to another video on time series forecasting. On our last recording, we had discussed the ACF or the autocorrelation function, where we saw how an observation at time t could be correlated to all the previous observations, which we call as lags, where you say, given a fixed period, or an interval of time, you said t minus one, t minus two, t minus three, where one represents that interval that we are considering. And we are able to find the correlation from t to t minus one, from t to t minus two, and so on. For every, every lag that we have, we are finding the correlation between the observation at t and the observation at t minus a certain time. So the unique thing about ACF or autocorrelation function was that once we consider a relationship between say t and t minus three, and uh, this was plotted in the manner of showing our correlation coefficient in the y-axis and the x-axis represented the lags, right? Where zero was talking about no lag. So zero would give a perfect correlation of one if we were to plot it. With itself, zero give a perfect correlation. That is the observation at time t correlated with itself, right? So as we move away, we are likely to see slight bit of a decay. Now this decay could be gradual in this manner or the decay could see sudden spikes in this manner, right? So that depends on whether or not the data is stationary. We see a different kind of a plot, all right? However, for us to get the correlation between T and T minus three, Let's say this particular one here is identifying the correlation between t and t minus three. It is worth noting that uh, for ACF, we are not getting rid of any of the intermediate correlations, which is to say for t to be related to t minus three, there is some influence that t has on all the previous lags as well. And uh, you could say T minus one has an influence on T minus two and so on, as well as the influences of T minus one on T minus three. So all these intermediate correlations are also coming into account as far as the autocorrelation function is concerned. Right? The idea of the partial autocorrelation function is that when you have your correlation here and the lags in the y-axis, so in the, in the x-axis here, we basically take a certain lag with the observation at time zero or at, at time t, right? And at that point, what we are saying is for us to get this partial autocorrelation function, we are assuming that uh, to begin with t as well as t minus three are both correlated to the observations in between, which is to say this one and this one, both t minus three and t are correlated to these observations. But for our purpose, for the partial autocorrelation function, these indirect correlations would be ignored, which is to say, we would only be taking the correlation between T and T minus three, regardless of all the observations that fall in between. Right? That's the idea of <clears throat> plotting a partial autocorrelation function. So when we take a look at these plots, 
ACF is something handy for us to get the order of a moving average model. I can put that down. ACF. Good for identifying order of a moving average model and the PACF identifies the order of an auto regret auto regressive model. Right for MA that parameter would be you could say MAP and this would be ARQ. So that's the key difference between autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation. 